Welcome back to the 17th part in this series and in this one we've finally sort of gotten to a point where our to-do list application is working, we've built the front end and we've also built an API for it to be able to talk to and propagate data to. How I want to do is I want to just quickly go over how I might sort of go about styling an application like this, just very quickly sort of uh, just a single video just to go over sort of how you would integrate CSS into a Django project in case you sort of want to go down that route of uh, How do I actually make it look nice as well to get started then I first need to link the CSS file Which we haven't created yet to our HTML template So at the top in the in the head of this HTML document. I'm just going to uh, create a link to the CSS template and I'm going to create a link to a static directory, so uh, using Django's uh, static files, we're going to do uh, we're, go we're going to create a file in CSS in a, in a folder called CSS, and we're just going to call it todo.css. So if we go to the static folder where it's going to recognize that, and I'm going to create a new file, and it's going to be in CSS forward slash todo.css. Now that we have that, we should be able to go ahead and check it sort of works. So let's just go to our template and find something that we can sort of associate it with. Let's say the H1, so this header here, we could, uh, let's just make change the font on that for example. I'm just gonna refer to it as H1, so in other words, all the biggest header tags in the template. And I'm gonna just change the, let's change the font size, let's make it really big and maybe the color to uh, gray, dark gray, something like that. And that's a bit ugly, so let's change the uh, font. Let's change the font to Helvetica. Uh, actually, it's font family, I think. So that's the reason that's probably not changing. There you go, so now it's changed to the font that I want. Let's have a look at maybe changing this form. So if we go to the template, the form is here. We've got an input and a button. So we can sort of target those specifically if we want to. Let's go back to the CSS. I can do form to target the main main form itself. And I could just say uh, background color is blue for example just so that we can see it it's going to be quite a sort of vibrant blue so at the moment the form sort of occupies this space from from here all the way across the page i think we could go ahead and change this actually to i'm going to change this maybe to a, a light blue and i'm going to also add a color that could be just white Let's see what that does and i want to sort of I don't want it sort of this shape, so I want it maybe to be a bit beneath. So let's change the display to inline block. So that looks okay, but that's not quite what I want. So maybe I'll try a different one. Let's look at a uh, flex. I forget which one it is that goes beneath, maybe it's grid. So now the button's sort of beneath, but it's all the, all of this is a little bit small in my opinion. So let's go and make it all a bit bigger. I could change the font size to something like 14 pixels maybe. Uh, so maybe I actually have to target the elements more specifically than that. So instead of putting the font size here, I think what I want to do is Let's look at the template again, and I want to ch target just the form input, or just the form button specifically. So that one of the ways that I can do that, I mean I could always put a class on any of these elements and target it that way, but I could also, for example, if I wanted to target any form that has an input inside of it, or in other words, a form that has a child with that is an input, just on that first sort of descendant in other words, then I could also put the font size inside like that. So you can see this font here in the input field has just gotten bigger. Now I've just noticed actually when I type in this box, this box gets very small. So maybe I'll just change that back to uh, something else. Let's, let's just leave that block for now. 
So it's just next to the input field instead. I think that looks quite good as well. And, or in fact, let's maybe try to make that centered. I think flex might be better. So, okay, so now I need to start this button. So what I could do is I could go back to the template. And so in this case, we want the button. So we could go to the CSS and I'll do, let's do form and we want the button inside that form and I want the color to be the same light blue color and I also want the border color to be the same uh, and I also want the background color to be the same so let's do light, light blue again so I've got a button there, but I can't see the text in it, so let me just set the color actually to white so I can read it. So now you can see the submit button there. Um, it's a little bit small still, so I'm gonna change the font size to something that's a little bit bigger. Uh, same as the input field there. And maybe one, one last thing, I'll just make this done button a, a little bit nicer as well. So let's go back to the index. I'm not going to spend ages on this styling, it's just to sort of show you a bit of an example of what you might want to do. And let's, in this case, let's do something different, let's add a class. So this is probably what you're going to be doing quite a bit if you're styling CSS with specific elements, as opposed to styling just general forms like we were doing at the moment. So I'm going to call this class done, and if I go to the CSS and I say dot done, so a dot is for a class, a hash is for a unique identifier, and if I do uh, on this class, I can pretty much change this done button over here to whatever I want. So let's make the font size again a little bit bigger. Let's do something fun. Let's do maybe 48 pixels. Let's see how that looks. It's going to be quite big. If that looks okay. Uh, let's do the background color. And that could be light blue as well, just to be consistent and let's set the border radius so in other words round the corners a little bit we could do maybe 10 pixels uh, that looks kind of good so let's do the border color and that's probably going to be let's see what inherit does no that doesn't look too good so let's do light blue. So I guess that looks okay. Let's just also change the color itself of this done button to white, just like the submit button. And I think that looks a little bit nicer. Maybe I'll also do the same uh, apply border radius to the uh, submit button itself. So I'll put that there. Maybe only five pixels because it's a bit smaller. And you can see it's sort of rounded the corners a little bit. One thing that I don't like is that the background color is now showing up for the form, so maybe I'll just get rid of that. And now you can see this sort of, the button's rounded there. So I think that looks a lot nicer than it did before. By all means, do whatever you want to the styling of this uh, to do this application, but I'm going to leave it here for now because I think that's enough to sort of give us good grounding in how to sort of target specific elements within the templates and uh, make them look sort of slightly better than they did, even if they're not perfect.